This is Mazen Kerala Infectious Disease and Critical Care Medicine. Today is April 15th, 2020, and this is an update on our understanding of COVID-19 for better management. This is mainly inspired by an article that was published in the Intensive Care Medicine Journal a few days ago by Professor Gattinoni. Our understanding of the pathology associated with COVID-19 is changing and now we know that there is spectrum of pathology. Starting on the left side here with low VQ ventilation to perfusion on the expense of higher perfusion that is caused by vasodilation. The vasodilation is caused by the dysregulation of pulmonary vasculature and pulmonary vasoplasia caused by the attachment of the virus to S2 receptors. The hypoxia does not cause the normal vasoconstriction response because of the vasoplasia. That's why we're saying there's an abolishment of hypoxic vasoconstriction. As a result of this, the patient will become hypoxemic and he will uh, increase the work of breathing in order to get larger tidal volume. At the same time, those patients have increased respiratory drive because of the neurotropism and that will lead to further increase in the work of breathing. This will lead to large swings in the intrathoracic pressure, leading to increased transpulmonary pressure. The increased transpulmonary pressure will exert stress and strain on the alveoli, leading to what we call patient self-inflicted lung injury. At the same time, because of the inflammation and the release of the cytokines, we have an alveolar injury or direct alveolar injury on the alveoli leading to exudates and consolidation. The abolishment of hypoxic vasoconstriction is still there and patients have vasodilation. Thus, the ratio between ventilation and perfusion is much more lower compared to the first case. In this case here, we have decreased ventilation and perfusion is still increased. So there is a huge shunting process in this pathology here, leading to severe hypoxemia. We also learned that certain percentage may have micro, certain percentage of patients may have micro or macro thrombi leading to dead space disease. Areas of the lungs that are ventilated but not perfused. So the VQ ratio in these patients or in these areas of the lungs will be high. So as you see it's all connected together. The low VQ ratio pathology eventually might lead to the alveolar injury and the self-inflicted lung injury. This is exaggerated uh, by the increased respiratory drive that lead to increased work of breathing. So, if we look at the radiology findings with, and that goes along with this pathology, in the low VQ, you will see those peripheral areas. On the chest x-ray, you may see some consolidation, but few opacities here and there, mainly of peripheral distribution. This, as we mentioned, leads to hypoxemia increased work of breathing 
and then it may lead to more injury on the lungs giving you the appearance of this uh, chest x-ray with bilateral pulmonary infiltrates consolidation and atelectasis as you know there are no specific findings on the chest x-ray that will tell you that this patient may have micro or macro thrombi unless the patient becomes hemodynamically unstable and you will see the evidence of this hemodynamic instability by echocardiography on CT scans uh, on the left side with uh, when the pathology is with low VQ ratios what you see is the areas of the ground uh, glass opacities mainly in the periphery the shunt fraction divided by the gasless fraction or areas of the lungs that are shunting to areas of the lungs that have consolidation is usually much more than one in this disease which is different than ARDS the ratio in the study by Gattinoni revealed that it is around three plus minus two when you progress to the right side here with very low VQ you will start seeing the diffuse bilateral pulmonary infiltrates consolidation and atelectasis at that time the shunt fraction to the gas lace fraction will approach one if you get a specific uh, uh, CT scan to rule out pulmonary embolism in certain situations and you have macro thrombi you may be able to see that on the CT scan as you see in the video here this is from a patient who has uh, COVID-19 COVID positively and uh, developed uh, severe hypoxemia CT scan to rule out pulmonary embolism was done and here you see bilateral pulmonary emboli this is the uh, CT scans taken from uh, the uh, professor Gattinoni's uh, study showing the uh, ground glass opacities the other areas of the lungs are relatively intact compared to the consolidation on the right side with bilateral infiltrates indicating ARDS like picture so what we uh, when we put things together those were put in different phenotypes the uh, pathology on the left side with a low VQ is uh, called phenotype L because the uh, elastance is low since the problem is only dysregulation of the uh, pulmonary vasculature there is no problems with the lung mechanics so those patients have normal compliance and low elastance as we indicated the ratio between ventilation and perfusion is low since we don't have much consolidation the lung weight is low and for the same reason those patients are less likely to respond to any recruitment maneuvers and they do not require high peep there is nothing to recruit there is nothing to expand with the peep so usually we put low peep for those patients on the other side we have the phenotype H so L stands for low and H stands for high once we have this uh, bilateral pulmonary infiltrates the lung injury this is uh, ARDS like picture those patients will have a very low VQ ratio with right to left shunt 
their lung mechanics are abnormal with high elastance and low compliance the lung weight is high due to consolidation and exudates those patients are likely to be recruitable and they may require higher PEEP for the increased work of breathing there's direct way to do to uh, estimate the, the increased work of breathing if you have esophageal monitor and you're monitoring the intrathoracic pressure or if you have a central line and you are seeing a deep swings in the pressures with inspiration most of the time you need to rely on your clinical uh, judgment and assessment to detect the increased work of breathing and if the patient is intubated you may be looking at the pressure generated in the first 0.1 seconds what we call p0.1 for the uh, possibility of micro or macro thrombosis this is mainly caused by what we call sepsis induced coagulopathy <clears throat> there are indicators for this that might hint that this process is ongoing the increased d dimers increased fibrinogen the abnormality in the coagulation the platelets are usually not very much low this might <coughs> implicate how we're going to manage those patients and you need to remember that the pathology is not discrete among these different uh, uh, abnormalities so patients progress from phenotype L to phenotype H and they go through stages so you will see a mixture of pathology at any time patients may develop uh, micro thrombosis and cause high VQ that alter your uh, gas exchange in the lungs however if you're dealing with a pathology that seems to be with a low VQ where the lung mechanics are normal with uh, high elastance and low uh, with high high compliance and low elastance at that time if the work of breath is not work of breathing is not increased you can put the patient on high flow oxygen to correct the hypoxemia and you can consider CPAP or PiPAP for those patients but if you do that it has to be in the right settings where you are decreasing the risk of transmission to healthcare workers and it is for limited time only we're talking about hours with continuous monitoning of the uh, work of breathing for those patients if the patient is not improving at that time you proceed uh, with intubation if the patient is intubated since the compliance is normal you don't need to use low tidal volume you can use 8 ml per kg to ventilate those patients you don't need high peep there's nothing to recruit here so peep of 8 to 10 in most cases would be very appropriate you can try proning for those patients but the mechanism to improve oxygenation is related to uh, different uh, pressure and different uh, gravitational uh, forces that will shift the areas of uh, the uh, pulmonary vasodilation to different areas hoping that it may improve oxygenation so if you do it you need to monitor oxygenation and make sure that the proning position is helping your patient <clears throat> now i put here pulmonary vasoconstrictors 
which makes sense since the main issue here is vasodilation so if you have a pulmonary vasoconstrictor it may improve the uh, the vasodilation but also uh, vasodilators have been tried like nitric oxide and prostaglandins to uh, uh, probably vasodilate the other areas that are still showing vasoconstriction in the lungs there's nothing to prove this you need to if you need to if you do it you need to monitor the patient and see the response are they responding to nitric oxide are they responding to prostaglandin like like the epiprostenol so the management here is different uh, patients may uh, be intubated and then uh, you do the tidal volume and the low peep patients may not be intubated and then you do the CP, CPAP, BiPAP or oxygen and you monitor the patient very closely at all times you need to monitor the work of breathing and if those patients have a high respiratory drive high work of breathing this is an indication that this patient may progress into phenotype H and you may want to prevent this by early intubation for those patients sedation and sometimes you need to paralyze those patients to decrease that intrathoracic uh, pressure change that may lead to patient self-inflicted lung injury now on the other side if your patient progressed or you are dealing with a patient with phenotype H from the beginning this is similar to uh, ARDS it is ARDS like picture and patients should be ventilated with lower tidal volume 4 to 6 ml per kg like protective lung strategy those patients may respond better to PEEP we usually do not give very high PEEP to prevent any hemodynamic compromise of the patient the uh, the PEEP usually is 16 or less but in certain situation you may have to do it and at that time you need to continue to monitor uh, hemodynamics to make sure that there is no major hemodyma hemodynamic compromise those patients may be uh, recruitable and you can do this with recruitment maneuvers you can uh, do a uh, recruitment uh, mode of ventilation uh, such as uh, airway pressure release ventilation and you can do prony position uh, for those patients in general uh, uh, we give conservative uh, fluid strategy however you need to balance this with the uh, hemodynamics so you want to give uh, uh, fluids based on uh, hemodynamic targets and the last set would be those patients with the possibility of uh, micro or macro thrombi and whether they benefit from anticoagulation or not i hope that uh, i gave a broad picture of uh, an explanation of uh, these different uh, pathologies associated with covid 19 respiratory failure thank you very much